Kenneth Mayfield is the second of six children born to Herbert Hoover and Inez Mayfield of Oklahoma, Mississippi. When Kenneth was born, his father was working as a sharecropper on a farm in Pontotoc County. His father moved to Gary, Indiana, where he worked for the railroad until he died in an auto accident when Kenneth was nine. His mother worked as a farm laborer until she was employed as a housekeeper at the Oklahoma Community Hospital shortly after the death of her husband. Kenneth's mother was left in poverty to raise six young children, ranging in age from 11 years to seven months old. Mrs. Mayfield, who was still living on Highway 41 in Chickasaw County near her home site where Kenneth was reared, was asked to reflect back on those difficult days. Mrs. Mayfield had this to say. You can't describe it, you know. You just really can't because, see, at the time, he was working in Gary Nana on the railroad. And he was on his way home, and I didn't know. He had started home that Christmas, and the roads were so bad, he turned around, you know, and went back. And he started back on the 7th of January. Kenneth and his older brother Herbert had to grow up fast after the death of their father. Even before he was a teenager, he had earned a reputation of working like a man in the cotton fields in Pontotoc County. Kenneth later developed quite a reputation as a hay hauler in Chickasaw County, where he worked during the summers, starting when he was only 14 years old. It was during those years in the cotton and hay fields that Kenneth first had dreams of becoming a lawyer. Kenneth's best friend throughout the secondary school was Reverend Odell Bowen, who is a pastor of New Zion MB Church in Van Vliet. When asked to describe what he most remembers about Kenneth, he answered frankly. We went all the way through from second grade to um, twelfth grade uh, in uh, high school together. And uh, we've been friends ever since. Matter of fact, at that time, uh, the only means of making a little money on the side was picking cotton. Uh, and Old Mayfield was a cotton picker. <laughs> and we uh, started a little paint business. Mayfield uh, drum up some jobs and uh, we get together at night, you know, and we we do some painting. I still have a dream. 
It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. On April 4, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. Less than two months later, Kenneth graduated with honors from Fannie Carter High School, now Okalona High School, at the age of 16. After high school, he enrolled at the University of Mississippi with his mind set on graduating from Ole Miss and moving on to Harvard Law School. Kenneth maintained a good academic record at Ole Miss and became an honor student with a 3.7 grade point average during the fall semester of his sophomore year. Dr. Donald Cole, who is presently a professor and administrator at Ole Miss, was Kenneth's best friend when they were co-students at Ole Miss. I spoke with Dr. Cole and asked him to reflect back on those days. <laughs> 1968, a very good year. We were there as, uh, as freshmen. Uh, and uh, it wasn't long at all before somehow we ended up as being uh, friends and uh, acquaintances. And of course that would be natural because of the few uh, number of uh, blacks who were, who were there. Uh, but that uh, acquaintances uh, quickly became to uh, uh, evolved into friendships and that quickly evolved into uh, good and best friendships. Although Ole Miss had been integrated by James Meredith in the midst of a riot in 1962, there were less than 100 blacks living on campus in 1968, and there were no blacks on the football or basketball teams or any other sports. Also, no blacks were employed as professors or in any other administrative fields. Kenneth was among the blacks who demonstrated on campus. Kenneth lost focus on his dream of becoming a rich lawyer and eventually participated in an uprising at Fulton Chapel that led to his one-year suspension from the University of Mississippi. Patsy Brumfield, who is presently a writer at the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal, was a college student at Ole Miss working for the Daily Mississippian during the demonstration that led to Kenneth's suspension from school. I spoke with Patsy and asked her to reflect on Ole Miss as it was in 1970. I believe that those folks really understood that that was important and that they were not going to let that put a stain on their lives. And, uh, and they have become outstanding people, many of them, because of that. In September 1970, Kenneth transferred to Tougaloo College where he graduated magna cum laude with a BA degree in political science. Kenneth was accepted in the 27-month expedited law degree program at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In August 1973, he obtained his Juris Doctor degree at the age of 22. By the time Kenneth obtained his law degree, Donald Cold was working on his master's degree at the University of Michigan also. He was asked to reflect on the Kenneth Mayfield that he knew at that time. After graduation from law school, Kenneth Mayfield worked as an intern with the NAACP Legal Defense Fund in Jackson, Mississippi, in the law offices of Anderson, Banks, Nichols, and Leventhal for nine months. He passed the Mississippi Bar, and in June 1974, he opened his practice in Tupelo to begin his career as a civil rights lawyer. During his first years of practice, Mr. Mayfield filed over 40 civil rights lawsuits, including many that were class action suits. He was a voice for the disenfranchised citizens of North Mississippi who were being discriminated against or mistreated and courageously sued municipalities, police departments, factories, and many others. Fear was not a factor for Mr. Mayfield. Cliff Dixon was Mr. Mayfield's first civil rights client. So, Kenneth and I said we'll go down and visit the area. And that's when we found out that you had to go to the back door to purchase your Burke's bus ticket. You had to go to the back door to eat. The Klan protested his office is because he, he stands up for what's right. 
It didn't take Mr. Mayfield very long to learn that the practice of civil rights was not going to be very lucrative. However, he continued handling those cases because that was his passion, and he knew his services were needed. However, he began to devote more of his time to the practice of general law, including auto accidents, bankruptcies, as well as divorces and family law, in order to become more financially secure. Mr. Mayfield quickly earned the reputation of the hardest working lawyer in North Mississippi. After living life as an eligible bachelor in Tupelo for five years, Mr. Mayfield married the love of his life while she was still a student at Ole Miss. Elois Davis Mayfield is a native of Panola County, Mississippi, from the heart of the Mississippi Delta. She is one of five children born to James L. Davis Jr. and Maddie Jackson Davis. Kenneth and Elois married in 1979 after a whirlwind romance of only six months. In 1990, Mr. Mayfield was juggling his duties as an attorney, businessman, and family man. Due to his success as an entrepreneur, he was able to retire from the practice of law to spend more time with his family. While he retired from law, he devoted his energies to developing his family businesses, and by 1992, he had attained success with five Retail Plus stores, a furniture factory, and a distribution center with gross sales in excess of $4 million a year. Mr. Mayfield was making a good living and had no immediate plans of returning to the practice of law. Judge Thomas Gardner is senior circuit judge for the 1st Judicial District of Mississippi. He remembers the period of time when Mr. Mayfield was so involved in family and business that he thought about giving up the practice of law. Honorable Thomas Gardner was circuit judge in the 1990s and remembers Mr. Mayfield. I was kind of aware that Kenneth was doing well in the furniture business and I had seen all this young millionaires and all this kind of thing. But still, black or white, he had a law license. He was a practicing lawyer. He'd been practicing here for several years at that point. And uh, going back to my uh, conviction that, you know, you, don't, you just don't give this kind of thing up. It didn't have anything to do with him being a black lawyer. It just had to do with him being a lawyer. That's all.